Good evening, and welcome to Monkeys with Fire. How is everybody tonight? I hope you're all well. Hope you're having a good week. So we are going to practically finish the week off with another tabletop game, but what are we playing tonight? Tonight it's a replay of Suspects from Studio H Games. Uh, we played this game a few months ago and thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. It won the channel's Seal of Approval Award. And, well, it's back on the table. We're going to try a different mystery with a different co-player. Uh, so let's see how we do. Sarah, are you all set and ready in the chat? Yep, okay, let's bring you on in then. Good evening, Sarah. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm doing all right. Excellent, okay, that's, that's good to know. Are you ready to solve a mystery tonight? I'm ready to try. <laughs> because, you see, we've, we've, we've got a reasonable amount of experience doing mysteries, haven't we? It doesn't mean that we necessarily solve them all, but we have experience of uh, trying, at least. <laughs> um, effort is always made. <laughs> maximum effort. <laughs> Um, it is, of course, uh, important to point out that due to the nature of this game, uh, we will be revealing story and puzzle content. So if you like the idea of the game, maybe watch it for a little bit, get a bit of an idea of the feel, and then possibly stop watching so that you don't ruin the game for yourselves, but then go out, buy it, and, uh, and have fun with your friends and family. All right, that being said, let's uh, jump into the game. Okay, so I have it all on the table. The great thing about this game is that uh, you don't really need a huge amount of table room. And it is, uh, <laughs> it's quite easy to set up and get going, which is always a plus. Lorno, hey guys, don't watch my stream. Yeah, I know, it's 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 kind of counterproductive, but I, I know that the audience, there are some people who will watch a little bit and they'll go, that's the game for me, and they'll stop, which is great. There'll be other people who will watch this video in maybe months or years to come, hoping that we will be the ones who help them with a clue. Which, of course, if they are regular viewers of the channel, will know that we are probably not the right people to get, to help them with those clues. So, there Absolutely we go. Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, so let's just have a quick look at in the box, because if you are brand new... Oh, you got a, you got a, an arm on the green screen there. So, what have we got in here? We have some of the literature from the other cases. But basically, you have three cases within the box. Um, you have the solutions in the brown packets, which, of course, you don't open until the end. But we can pack all this away. So we don't need any of this. We have it all set out on the table. And ultimately, we have a pack of cards. So we'll put them just there. We do have... The solution, we will put that all the way up there. We don't need just that, that just yet. And we have our introduction. This guide practically takes you through um, how to play, but uh, I can guide us through that. It literally is just a couple of pages. So once you've played one game, you will instantly pick it up, not a problem. All right. I will, you should always start with the main mission sheet, and uh, I guess I will read through this, set the scene, and uh, and we'll get started. Uh, Sarah, uh, as, as always with these types of games, uh, any female characters, you will be doing the voices, I will do all the voices for the male characters. Uh, to give you an idea, now you might not be familiar with this, but these um, these cases and this entire game of suspects is based loosely around the works of Agatha Christie, the famous novelist for all those amazing uh, whodunit 
uh, novels. And so it's, it's written and designed in that kind of style. So we are looking that this is the 1930s. It is set in, uh, in fact, this particular case is in Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, so if you've ever watched uh, Death on the Nile or... Um, Oh, Murder on the Orient Express, you have the general idea of what this type of case is going to be like. Let me just grab my glasses. Alright, here we go, then I will, uh, I will read this out. And hopefully get some of these names correct. Uh, so this is Chapter 2, The Final Act. Introduction. Give a, a floating thing on screen. That, 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 that was me. <laughs> See? <Okay. laughs> Here we go. Um, Cecilia's Purcell's voice trembles with emotion. Claire, you absolutely must come to a rehearsal of my play. So many strange things have happening. Last week, the lounge bar was vandalized. Three days ago, a fire broke out in the wardrobe room, and now Mr. Winsley, our manager, was burglarized. Believe me, Claire, something is off here. I am certain that all of this has no coincidence. With everything that's going on, I thought of you and how you brilliantly solved the mystery at the Alistair estate. I spoke to Mr. Winsley about it, and he has no problem with you coming to our rehearsal. Come quickly, Claire. My career is at stake. Determined to get to the bottom of this, that morning I pushed my way through the doors of King, King's Theatre, a somewhat decrepit theatre on the outskirts of Edinburgh. It was 10.30am on Friday the 15th of March. No one was there to greet me, but I heard voices coming from way off. I crossed the hall and discreetly opened the door to the auditorium. On the stage, I saw Cecilia Purcell acting out a scene with the renowned thespian George Singleton. Under the direction of an enthusiastic director and the gaze of others who were no doubt the technicians. Without making any sound, I sat down in a red velvet seat to observe the scene. I found a leaflet on the seat next to me and began to read it. Okay, so we do have this leaflet and uh, we can take a look here so what does it say it's saying uh, production is happening in March through to the 30th of April it happens every Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m. tickets are only five pounds uh, the Troy Winsley company presents George Singleton and Everett Moore in a fickle heart a drama in three acts by Patricia Dalton, directed by Oliver Callan, uh, happening at the King's Theatre in Edinburgh. It was Oliver. Oh, did I say? Who did I say? Oh, you're just you're just saying it was Oliver. <laughs> it could well be. Is that is 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 that your uh, your early prediction? Yes. Okay, that's, that's fine, that's fine. So, uh, the Troy Winsley Company. Yes, a fickle heart. A heart shattered like glass. An unbridled passion. Three fates that cross paths over the years. Three fates that are determined by the fickleness of the heart. Directed by Oliver Callum. Uh, after a silence of more than ten years, Famed playwright Patricia Dalton presents an ambitious and poignant tale on a universal theme, love. Her eloquent pen intertwines the irrationality of our innate nature, nature and part of us that makes our hearts flutter. Spectators will delight in seeing themselves in each of these three characters for whom the author cannot hide her touching and sincere affection. Uh, we have pictures of George Singleton and Everett Moore. George Singleton, the greatest Shakespearean actor of his generation, who hasn't lost one bit of his... Verve, 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 what's verve? <laughs> On stage. Uh, Everett Moore, the Welsh actor, has returned from his Egyptian hiatus to once again step into the limelight. 
for the last time. And then down at the bottom, at partner worthy of these stars, the delightful Cecilia Prussell in her first major theatre role. Um, just for those who are new to the game, we have little indicators that basically say those are cards that we can reveal. So we will come back to this in a moment. Let's just uh, look at the back here. We're actually just getting uh, little notes for all the characters we might want to interview at the, at the theatre. We have the stage manager, David Thomas, set designer, Paul Duchamp, uh, costume designer, Bethany O'Connor, and lighting director, Robert Lyatt. All right, so we have a little bit of a uh, little bit of info there. Let's uh, let's carry on with the introduction. Once I finished reading, I listened to the actors recite their text and the director bark stage directions at them. A piece of the scenery, a huge wooden sun, was moving up and down high above the stage. Suddenly. The rope holding the set gave way, and the sun crashed down on the unfortunate George Singleton. Everyone rushed to his aid, but it was too late. He had been crushed to death under the weight of the sun. The victim's body was placed in his dressing room. It was 11... So I'm assuming that's 11am. I found Cecilia Prussell struggling to control her anger. Oh, Claire, this is terrible. The play may be cancelled. Given everything that's happened, there is no way this was just an accident. But who would want to hurt someone as sweet and, a, and as delightful as George? I owe my part in this play to him. He was kind enough to suggest my name to Mr. Winsley and Mr. Callum when they were looking for an actress. I hope that we'll be able to find a replacement for him soon. So we are able then to reveal a map of the theatre. Let's uh, take a look at that. And here it is, I'll bring it up there. What I will do is I will point out the major points of interest. We'll just place it in the centre here. So what do we have? Well, this is the King's Theatre in Edinburgh. We have the Lounge Bar, location 30. We have the foyer, but we don't need to go into that area. We have the balcony, location 10. And then we're looking down into the auditorium, we have all the seats, where we have the stage, location 48. Behind stage, we have backstage, conveniently enough, which is location 45. And then we have the scenery room, location 43. The wardrobe is location four. And then along the edge of the theatre, we have location 53, George Singleton's dressing room. Location 24, Everett Moore's dressing room. Location 37, Oliver Callum's office, being the director. And location 14, Troy Winsley's office. Troy Winsley, uh, he is the, uh, the owner of the company who's putting on the production. All right. And so it then tells us that we can draw card one. So we have our deck of cards. We uh, open up the first one. I'm just going to put the cards just here. And in fact, I can now we'll show this off so we can actually bring the card so you can see the artwork nice and clear. It tells us that we can draw card one. This is Cecilia Purcell. So uh, let's take a look. Now, hopefully, you can re read that clearly enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and away you go. George and I were rehearsing a. Si no, I'm sorry. <laughs> she's she's an she's an upcoming English actress. <laughs> She doesn't oh. need to have a, have a gravelly, smoky voice. <laughs> oh, okay. 
George and I were rehearsing a scene this morning, Mr. Callum, and warned us that they would be less, well, would be testing the scenery and asked us not to pay any attention to what was going on behind us. Mr. Callum had us change position on stage several times because he wasn't happy with our movements. He waved his arms all around like mad. It was a horrendous and, in my opinion, completely useless. Then suddenly I heard a loud crack and saw the set crashing down on poor George. Okay, so we have two options. We can question her about the recent incidents, uh, or we could question her about the other members of the theatre. Now, because Funny. I and chat have played this type of game before, we're going to let you take the lead as far as making decisions, but we'll also open it up to chat as well uh, as we progress. Uh, obviously, chat, you just fire on in any ideas, any suggestions. Oh, there we go. Roger's already with the first one, he says. He says, question her about the recent incidents. Do you agree, Sarah? Is that where you want to go? Just about the other cast members, but we can go with what chat wants. <laughs> it's, well, well, hey, you, you've got control, so you can, you can, you can take over if you want. You can, you can say what you want to go with first. We'll give everybody a chance as we play through, though, won't we? I want to know about the other members first. I know, maybe, I don't know, but didn't she kind of just tell us what happened with the recent incident? She kind of did, didn't she? Yes, because in the introduction it said the lounge bar was vandalized. Uh, three days ago, a fire broke out in the wardrobe room. And then Mr. Winsley, our manager, was burglarized. So we, we were probably going to be getting more info. But as Rogue is pointing out, we will probably end up doing both, won't we? So let's let's start with the recent, uh, sorry, with the other members of the theatre. It's telling us to draw card 20. Uh, we just, uh, da -da 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 -da, we go through. What's Oliver's last name? Uh, Callum, Oliver Callum. Okay, so that's him. Acting yeah. all crazy? Well, I'd be acting crazy too if I'd been doing all this crime. Okay, so we will just put in a new card. Let's take that one away because we've read that. We'll put that over there. There we go. All right, there's your new card. I'm not going to lie, my dear. This play was only possible because George was in it. His name was the only thing that could have drawn an audience. Or drawn an audience. That's the only reason I agreed to take part in this play with such an awful director. Every working day is the same. Mr. Winsley opens the theater at around 8 a.m. The technical team usually arrives before 9, except for Paul, the set designer, who has trouble getting up. Rehearsals start at 10 a.m. and can go until the can go until late in the evening the actors and mr callum usually arrive arrive around 9 45. that said mr callum who is usually so demanding arrived late this morning he didn't even go to his office he stated he started directing us as soon as he arrived okay so pointing out um the time when the victim's body uh, was hit was 11 o'clock, so it was just before 11 o'clock that the, uh, the scenery piece fell on the poor uh, George Singleton. Mm, right. I wonder why Oliver didn't go to his office. Mm, interesting. Uh, shall we then... We might well do as Roger suggested. We will go and take a look... Oh, well, sorry, we'll ask... Cecilia about the recent incidents, 42, just grab that, and I'm going to explain, once we've done this card, how the game works, so that uh, you have an idea of what we're aiming for, but since we're so early on, this is all good, we can ask all these questions, it's absolutely fine, there we go. It started a week ago, the lounge bar was vandalized. Fortunately, Robert, David, and Bethany quickly whipped it back into shape. Then three days ago, it was the wardrobe's room's turn. A fire broke out thanks to Mr. Thomas. Watchful eye, he was able to put the fire and avoid a catastrophe. But then yesterday, Mr. Winsley's office was broken into and everything was turned upside down. The manager seemed quite upset, but he told us that nothing had been stolen, which, if that's true, is very strange. Miss Harper, after all... After all of that, the atmosphere became quite uncomfortable. George was nervous, and Mr. Callum became more and more 
irritable during the rehearsal. Oh, yeah, Everett was the same as usual. <laughs> Drunk. Mm, okay. Everett Moore. So he's the he was the uh, Welsh actor, isn't he? Right. Seems oh. like Oliver has been trying to do everything he can to stop this production from happening, and so now he's getting mad that nothing is working. Maybe so, maybe so. All right. Side well, note, he... everyone. I'm convinced it's Oliver, even though he just started the game. Before anything happened, I decided it was Oliver because I like to name Oliver. <laughs> okay. Well, well, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So the way the game works is that we have this deck of cards which we can go through and we can go to the various locations or we can see the various people by the numbers that are marked on these on the floor plan and on this leaflet. And we can draw up our cards quite freely. But what we are looking to do is answer five questions. And the way that the game works is that if we can answer these questions and we answer it within 1 to 30 cards being revealed, then we will score 5 points. If we answer a question within 31 to 45 cards being revealed, then we score only 4 points. And if it is then 46 cards or more, then we only get 3 points. And we can change our minds as we progress through but it will always take our most um, most recent answer. All right. So what we will do Oliver, is... Oliver, lock it in. <laughs> we will probably want to, at 29... Oh, well, actually, on 30 cards, once those have been revealed, we are going to try and answer these questions and see, do we have a result? And what are the questions? Well, here we go. So why isn't it an accident? So we know it's murder. Who is the killer? What is the motive? What specific object does the murderer have on their person that would allow you to unmask him or her? What did George Singleton and Oliver Callum argue about? And as an additional question, who ransacked the bar and why? So those are the five questions that we will attempt to answer once we reach the 30 card limit. All right. So we have asked Cecilia as much as we possibly can, where do you want to go next? We have all these locations in the actual theater and then we do have the people Set. That, Let's look at the set that, that crashed down on the stage. So... 48 would be the stage, yes? Does that sound... Okay. Yeah, all right. Let's go for that. Da, 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 da. Yep. I, I really do like the artwork in, in this game. It's, uh, it's really well produced we have the uh, the sun stage piece there and uh, there we go this is where the tragedy took place in the middle of the stage on the floor sits the broken sun seeing the blood of the ill-fated George Singleton sends a chill down your spine when you unroll the rope the prop we had been hanging from you find an end that seems to have frayed not cut cleanly. All right. Roger saying it was the Phantom. It it could well be. It could well be the Phantom. So we'll put that. It wasn't a cut a, rope. It was a frayed rope. It was which a could frayed say rope. that it could have just been an accident. It could have been an accident. This is true. This is true. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where next? So. I mean, we can move around to all these look. There's no uh, element of time in this game, so we can jump around all over the orchestra. place. Orchestra. Uh, there's, there's not an orchestra. Well, the place in front of the stage. Oh, that is the stage. That oh, okay. is the stage. <laughs> so you got the stage. What's behind it? It's the backstage. Backstage, yeah. Backstage. 
Uh, that's quite, quite correct, Lorna. We know it's not an accident because the scorecard already told us we're looking for a murderer. It's very true. Yeah, and then I'm with Roger. After this, we could look in the dead man's dressing room. In his dressing room? Okay. So here we go. We are in the backstage. Let's uh, take a look. Oh, ah. So this is a card that then reveals two elements here. So the backstage area of the theatre is where the different sets of a play are moved around with the rigging. You can climb up the ladder to the catwalk above the stage. So we have two elements. We can examine the rigging or we can climb Both of them. up the catwalk. Well, you choose which one you want to do first. Catwalk. Catwalk, okay. I'm going to put that there. Uh, catwalk is card 15. All right. Rogue is agreeing. Rogue wants to go to the catwalk as well. Oh, this is a clue card. All right, we have a clue. Uh, what does it say? If you have the spotlight card, or as soon as you draw it, um, then we do an action. If you do not have the spotlight card, draw card 51. We're going to put that there. And draw card 51. And uh, as you can see, we are up on uh, above the stage, but everything is, is quite dark. So let's uh, let's take a look. This is the catwalk where the sets and the devices used to make them appear on stage are hung. You can't be afraid of heights up here. The light is very dim and you can't see much. So that was above stage. We can't see much because of the poor lighting. Uh, you wanted to examine the rigging next, yeah? Yes. Okay. <laughs> if only we had a light, says Roger. Uh, we have another clue card. And this is the rigging. The wooden posts that the ropes use to raise and lower the scenery are attached to. None of them appear to be damaged. So everything seems to be fine with the rigging. I'm gonna move hmm. this out the way because we need a bit of room. You want me to remind you of the conditions? I will do so, just let me know. So the fact, conditions of, oh, for like the questions? Yes, yes, as, as and when you want to check. So we got those going on there, we got those down there, we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we've done the eight dressing room. Eight cards so far, we're nearly a third of the way to the first check checkpoint. Dressing room, as in George Singleton's or Everett Moore's. The man who died. George Singleton, that's card fifty-three. Of course, uh, Mr. Singleton is laid out <laughs> in his dressing room. <laughs> so, um, so we have some details here. Saturday, May 5th, Shadow Island. That's interesting. What day is ours? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you got you got to look at everything. Um, this particular production ends on the 30th of April. Okay. May 5th is pretty close. So maybe that was his next... Oh, well, there's a hint of Phantom of the Opera on the wall. There is a bit of a Phantom there, isn't it? So here we go. Uh, the victim's body was moved to his dressing room. George Singleton is taking his eternal rest on the sofa. Of the, of the sofa. On the vanity, oh, cause it, that's the thing, isn't it? You notice an open envelope among the stage makeup. 
So we have two options. Examine the letter or examine George Singleton. Let's examine the letter and then we're going to examine that body. That's it. Okay. 23 for the letter. Again, another clue. Uh, okay. <clears throat> London, 11th of March, 1935. My dear George, I received the copy of A Fickle Heart that you sent me. I was shocked when I read it. I'm quite sure that I've seen this play before, some 15 years ago. And I can assure you that it was not the work of Patricia Dalton. The play had a different name then. But I clearly remember the love triangle and the three characters. However, I can't for the life of me recall the author's name. I seem to remember that it was a pseudonym as it often is the case with budding authors. As a friend, I feel it's my duty to warn you. Henry Palmer. Oliver wrote a play many years ago. <laughs> so, so Henry Palmer is basically... <laughs> Lawnmower, the author is H.G. Dunnett. H.G. Dunnett. H. Dunnett. Fantastic. Okay, yes, it could well have been H. E. Done it. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Uh, our friend is warning us that there potentially is some plagiarism going on here. Right, uh, do we want to examine the body? Yes. Yes? All right. Let's check the body out. We have another clue. Oh, what do we have? We have a black metal key. You find a black metal key in the right outer pocket of George Singleton's jacket. What door could it possibly open? Okay. We have a key. Are you are you writing your own fan fiction regarding this uh this particular case there, Sarah? Oliver wrote the original play. Okay, it flopped. He's had a lot of struggles this whole time. He's finally hired to produce this play. He's like, yes, I'm gonna finally be able to pay rent. I'm not gonna be evicted. And then he's like, wait a minute, this seems just like my original Triangles of Love play. And then he's like, but I can't say anything because one, I need this money, and two. For some reason, he can't say it. And then, so, he's just hoping things are just mysterious, because he needs the money. So, he's just hoping things that it never gets to play, but then he's going to be like, but I've made enough to pay rent, so it's okay. Oliver's the director. What have you got? Why have you got it in for Oliver? I told you this a minute ago. I like the name Oliver, and I've just decided okay. it's him. Okay, okay. I mean, Lorno's quite correct, but if it is Oliver in the end, you are going to be super smug. <laughs> You'd be like, man, we would have gotten 20 points because I called it before the game started. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so we have a key. A key would, of course, uh, mean that it may be used in we one of the any... rooms. Yeah, do we have any interesting rooms to search? So the rooms that you haven't any... been in is the, the lounge bar, the balcony, the scenery room, the wardrobe room, then we have Everett Moore's dressing room, Oliver Collum's uh, office, and Troy Winsley's office. We need to go to Oliver's office. Okay. Um, remember, you do have, of course, the option to be able to talk to various people. So we have Troy Winsley, who is the production manager, let's call him that. Everett Moore, the other actor. Oliver Callum, your best friend, who's the director. Uh, we then have David Thomas, the stage manager. We have costume designer Bethany O'Connor and lighting director Robert Lyatt. Okay, so don't forget the people. 
The last time we played this, we checked every single okay, then location let's talk to... <laughs> and forgot to talk to people. <laughs> let's talk to the lighting guy. The lighting guy, yeah, okay, that sounds like a plan. Uh, card 35. Remember, at card 30, let's just, just count up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're up to 11 cards. This is now the 12th card, and that is 35. Oh, 36. All right, so here we go. We have Robert Lyatt, who is the lighting director. Well, he just looks suspicious. You think so? I think he looks all right. Robert Lyatt, he's 33 years old, a lighting designer. Are you here with the police, Miss Harper? You're not. Then I don't see why I should answer your questions. But if you want my opinion, I'll give it to you. It's a terrible accident that will unfortunately tarnish the theatre's reputation. I'm not sure the play will ever open. And it's a pity, because it seems like a lovely show. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have other things to do than satisfy your unhealthy curiosity. And I apologise profusely for anybody who might have been insulted by that accident. Because <laughs> it kind of went, into, it went into, into three different types of accent, and I can't even describe what types. Uh, okay, so I enjoyed them. I enjoyed whatever mod podge of accents it was. Did, did you, do, at, at least the one thing I'm uh, not attempting is Scottish. <laughs> so I vote 17. Uh, 17. Uh, question him about his work as a lighting technician. All right, let's do that. So... Uh, Let's put Robert just over there. And go for car 17. There we go. Uh, okay, here we go. Lighting technician. I'm a lighting designer, miss. But I guess that's the kind of subtle distinction that young women like you can't understand. Oh. It... <laughs> oh, he's not starting on a good spot here. It's not just a matter of pressing a switch, but of bringing a scene to life. From heart above stage, I decide on just the right angle, the right filter that will allow me to underscore the feelings expressed on the stage. And believe me, with a work that's as, as emotionally charged as a fickle choice, it's extremely important. But you've wasted enough of my time, Miss Harper. Please go harass someone else. Good day, Miss Harper. Good day to you, Miss. So, hmm. Hmm. We can question him uh, about the... Kick over his lighting stand and walk away. Yes. Yes, because he's a, he's a bit full of himself, isn't he? We're not, not sure we'd like him. You can you can continue to question him, um, but that's totally up to you. Let's go talk to the costume lady. The costume lady? That is Bethany O'Connor. Oh no, it's still Oliver, but this guy, if he happens to accidentally fall out of the lighting area, oops. <laughs> gonna be the okay. next game, how the detective killed the lighting technician. Here is Bethany, Bethany O'Connor. She does not look happy at all, does she? Hey? Um, we wanted to be the leading lady, but was was kicked out. Possibly so. Well, uh, you can... Uh, you can uh, demonstrate how disgruntled she is with your fine rendition of her voice. Away you go. I don't know what to, what voice to give her. Well, she's angry. <laughs> <laughs> the only other accent I know. Okay. <laughs> I got to do the theater around. No, I can't do it now. Wait, hold on. I can't do it. I can't do the the voice. Don't worry. Well, do do whatever comes naturally. I'm trying to think, cause I used to be able to do the what one might say could be somewhat Russian-ish, but I can't. 
remember how to do it now. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so frazzled by the light lighting condition. Yeah, no, I can't do it. Okay. No, just go for it. Boom. All right. I got to the theater around 8.40 a.m. and went to say hello to Mr. Wensley. The poor man was on the floor gathering up his papers. When we finished cleaning everything up, I saw that Robert had just entered the office. He looked a little flustered. Maybe he went to ask Mr. Wensley for money. I don't... I, I know he isn't paid much. I asked him for help putting the costumes away because I left them all in a jumble since the fire. Robert didn't end up asking Mr. Winsley for anything, and we spent the morning together. He came running when when we heard the crash and Miss Purcell's screams. R Robert being, of course, the, uh, the lighting technician stroke designer director okay. that, that we've just spoken to so maybe <laughs> maybe there's something uh there's some relationship here maybe i want to ask her about the fire ask her about the fire okay i'm going to i'm going to move to give us some space i'm going to put all of our characters up at the top here so ask her about the fire card 55 Card 55, where are you? Alright. Yeah. It's arson. There's no doubt about it. Sometime, someone took advantage of the fact that I left the wardrobe room door open to hide a candle under a shirt. Luckily, Mr. Thomas noticed the smoke and put out the fire. Tongues have been wagging, accusing me of being negligent. Mr. Moore was the first among them. He had very spiteful words for me. You can't imagine how much I've suffered from this, from his accusations, Miss Harper. George Singleton was the only one who defended me. His death makes me very sad. George was a delightful and charming man, the polar opposite of Everett, who is irritable and temperamental as a child. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. All right. I say we go into the costume room. Yes. All right. Well, we can do that. So that is card four. Everyone's blaming me because I left the door open. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. We have the wardrobe room, which uh, all looks fairly, fairly neat. Hmm. There are costumes hanging on racks and draped over chairs waiting to be put away. A fire recently broke out on the floor in this room, but the wooden floor appears intact. The smell of wax suggests that it has been recently being cleaned. There are no suspicious marks on the floor and no smell of burnt materials. Hmm. It's, it's, it's like it never happened. Yeah, that's what I'm, uh, I'm getting from that. Which... Did it happen? Hmm. Because yes, because if uh, 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 smoke would uh, would would obviously be, the, the smell of smoke would be in the, the clothing and it would be in the actual in the room as well, wouldn't it? And if there's no evidence to uh, any uh, any fire, yeah, that's very it's very strange. Ooh, ooh. Oh, am I overthinking it? What happens if because you're in a theatre? You can make things look like there was a fire. Did anybody actually see the fire? Ah, so luckily, Mr. Thomas noticed the smoke and put out the fire. Who's Mr. Thomas? 
The stage. Is he the lighting guy? No, he's the stage manager. Oh, so he's the one that was like, oh, excuse, this place is on fire because you left the door <laughs> open. And then was like, but don't worry, I put it out. So, Mr. So Moore was having, like, the little first hero among complex them. here? But was uh, he the only one to see it? it he's, well, it, it doesn't say otherwise. So he's tired of her flirting with the lighting guy, leaving stuff unlocked, so he thought that he would teach her a lesson. Maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah, she's too too busy with her little affair that's going on. Uh, so, yes, maybe so. I, I get the impression that the Everett Moore, the Welsh actor who we've not spoken to, he's just grumpy about everything. Um... Uh, so that could be the bit of the, the red herring that we're kind of supposed to think that he might be the bad guy. But uh, I think he probably just is just grumpy. But I think there's a... Uh, so is there a possible... Considering that the play is about a love triangle, is there a love triangle here somewhere? Probably. Yeah? That something in real life is, is mirroring the production? So do you want to ask her, uh, get her opinion on the other members of the theatre? Yeah, I think that she'll be shady, so yeah. Yeah? All right. So that is card 52. Okay, all ah, right. We can really question her. Away you go. Well, I can't say that the mood was good. That'll be Mr. Moore's fault. It's no secret that he is a little heavy-handed with the liquor. And Mr. Singleton was trying to help him, but it wasn't very reciprocal when we got to the scene of the tragedy. Mr. Moore wasn't there. Then, when he appeared on stage, he didn't lift a finger to help. He didn't seem too affected by it. Okay. So let's see here. Winsley, he owes me two... Oh. Owes me two months' salary. He tried to use his limp to make me feel sorry for him, but it's a waste of time. Duchamp is a lazy Frenchman. Oh, okay. Lyot, a helpful and cultured man. Who's the Mr. lighting Callum, director? Mr. Callum's whipping boy is Thomas. And Mr. Callum, a Callum, yes. Oliver is an unpleasant man. Mr. Moore, failed actor and an alcoholic. And Purcell is a talented actress. It makes you wonder what she's doing here. Okay, so we have hmm. some we have some initial thoughts on the various characters who are in the theatre. And that's that's the important part, is it's gonna be one of these people, isn't it? So we need to start thinking about these individuals. We can do exactly the same, and maybe it's worth doing so. Uh for a bit of a comparison, we can talk to Robert and I think get his idea on the various characters in the theatre. Uh, so we can use it as a bit of a comparison. Maybe he has a differing viewpoint. It's the same but different. <laughs> it is. Is it worth... Shall I... Let me just double check. Let's just have a quick look. Yes, go on. Let's 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 do this. So uh, this is my uh, my suggestion to the uh, to the game. We're gonna bring Robert back. You're a stubborn one, I see. Since the lounge bar was vandalized, the atmosphere has really gone downhill. David, Paul, Bethany, and I cleaned up the whole mess. The key to the lounge bar was in Mr. Winsley's office. Someone must have stolen it without anyone noticing. I'm certain that it's the same person who's responsible for the fire, the burglary of Mr. Winsley's office, and Mr. Singleton's accident. Are you satisfied now? 
So his thoughts. Troy Winsley, a good man. George Singleton, a hell of an actor. Cecilia Prussell, thinks this play will be her breakout role. I don't think she's cut out for the part. Everett Moore, should lay off the bottle. Sometimes he can't control himself. Oliver Callan, demanding. Sometimes a bit too demanding. David Thomas, competent and human. Paul Duchamp, a layabout who does nothing but complain. Bethany O'Connor, an ass girl, very meticulous. So, slightly, well, yeah. slightly different views. So he sees Troy Winsley as a good man, whereas Bethany Winsley owes her two months' worth of salary. He sees Duchamp as a layabout, and uh, Bethany he thinks Duchamp is a, French, a lazy Frenchman, so that's comparable. Uh, he doesn't think Cecilia is up for the play, whereas uh, Bethany thinks she's a talented actress. Both of them agree that Everett Moore would probably lay off the booze. Oliver Callum. Bethany sees him as an unpleasant man, whereas Robert sees him as demanding, maybe a bit too much. David Thomas. Mr. Callum's whipping boy, as far as Bethany's concerned. Whereas Robert just thinks he's human. <laughs> <laughs> so, slightly, you know, there's some 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 uh, similarities. There are also some uh, disparities. Let's go into the drunk guy's dressing room. The drunk guy's dressing dressing room. So that's Everett Morse twenty four. But hey, did you remember that they talked about a key? Right, but where would the key go? In the lounge. Sorry, oh, I was, then let's I, go to the lounge. I, I, was, I, I, was, I was sounding just like him. He's going to lounge. The key to the lounge bar was in Mr. Winsley's office. Someone must have stolen it without anybody noticing. So remember, we found the key on the body of George Singleton. Did There's George Singleton take the key or did somebody place it in George Singleton's pocket after his demise? But we want to go to, into the lounge. Uh, number 30. Okay. So, we're going to go to the lounge bar. Okay, so what this does is we have a little trick here. We can take the key, and if the key fits... We put both cards next to one another. So the key fits into the lock. Draw card two. Excellent. So we are able to gain access to. So we're going to put that and that together. Gets us in. And we are now into the lounge bar. Okay. The door opens into a cosy room with red velvet armchairs. A long bar seems to be waiting for customers to arrive. There are large mirrors hung on the walls. One of them bears signs of recent vandalism. Behind the counter, crystal cocktail glasses are stored neatly upside down, and the bourbon bottles are almost all empty. All right, so, bit of a dead end. But I think we, 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 we could assume whom might be uh, helping themselves to the, uh, to the bourbon. Yeah, so I say we go check his room. Yeah, I think that's probably a good call. Let's just count the cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We're two-thirds to the first checkpoint. All right. 
So you're gonna go to Everett Moore, 24. Uh, here we go. It's his dressing room. My goodness. That's a, a quite a disheveled room. Have a look. The Welsh actor's dressing room is a pigsty. There are clothes strewn about the floor, and the vanity is overflowing with makeup interspersed with bourbon bottles. There is an omnipresent sp smell of stale to tobacco, but makes you wish you could air out the room. A crystal glass is standing on a pedestal table. It is empty and dirty. So. Is there anything for us to search? There is not, no. Hmm. So, well, uh, we, we ca I'm going to put that actually with the lounge bar because that... That does mean that, that uh, Everett has been helping himself to the bourbon. Uh, dirty right. meat means used. Yes, I would say so, yes. Yes, someone's definitely been having a drink. Well, they said he's always drunk, so... Yeah, I, I think that's a kind of a given, isn't it? We, we, uh, we're not learning anything new there. We know this guy is basically an alcoholic, isn't he? So. Oliver. Or should we go talk to the drunk guy? Hey, it's your call. Let's go drunk, talk to the drunk guy. Drunk guy, so we're going to talk to actually to Everett Moore, okay? So we just turn this over, and it's card 49. Okay. Here, here he is. Famed Welsh actor Everett Moore, 66 years old. I can't do a Welsh accent, so I'm not going to try. Do it. No, no, absolutely not. No, no, no. Um, um, oh gosh, what, what's he going to sound like? What what happened to me? To what what happened to Singleton is terrible. I me I what will become of me? It's not every day I find a job like this. Mmm, this bourbon is rather excellent. But I won't hide the fact that with a director like ours, I don't know what is was going to happen with this play. Even Singleton managed to get upset with him. I heard them arguing in Callum's office. Believe me, Miss Harper, they had quite the falling out. So, there we go. I, I'm, I was trying. Yeah, we should have gone to Oliver's office. Well, you wanted to talk to Everett Moore. Question him about the argument. Question him about the argument. All right. Okay. Twenty-five. I'm trying. I'm trying to uh, channel my sort of. Hugh Grant, that's what I, I'm seeing him as. I, I watched the Paddington movie recently and Hugh Grant was in it and he was rather awesome. So, let's go with that. So we, we are asking him about the argument. Without warning, Everett Moore throws his glass on the floor, shattering it into pieces. He is livid. That, 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 that Callum is a Bastard, I tell you. He's trying to kick me out of this play and replace me. Pretending that my taste for bourbon is a problem. He's trying to convince Winsley to fire me. But on stage, I'm still the best. I'm sure Singleton tried to stop him. And that's why they argued yesterday. During the day, Singleton assured me that in the end, the truth will come out. He had figured it out. Ah, he had figured out all of our so-called director's little intrigues. 
<laughs> Good evening, Amber, and welcome. Wow. How could I forget Monkeys With Fire's not-so-awesome voice acting? <laughs> I thought the reason of your absence is that you've been in therapy for a while trying to get over the last time we did some acting. <laughs> Welcome, Amadon. I hope you're well. Okay, so what do we know? We know that uh, Winsley, the uh, Troy Winsley, the production, well, the owner of the production company, was trying to fire him, but Singleton was trying to stop it. Where was Callum? Where was Oliver in all of this? We need to go to his office. Uh, he had to... Singleton had figured out all of our so-called director's little intrigues. What is Oliver been up to? So we're going to go to Oliver's office, yeah? Yes. 37. Okay. Office of Oliver Callum. Here it is. Ah, ah, ah. So this requires a key. We will check just in case. Does our key fit? Our key does not fit the lock. Which we know, don't we? Because we went into the lounge with it. So we need to find another key. Somebody or somewhere there is another key. So, we're going to put that back. Talk to Oliver. You're going to talk to Oliver. All right. And we do have that location. Just going to put that Talk there. to our number one suspect. Well, here we go. Here we go. Uh, here is Oliver Callum, director of the play. He's a 32 years old. Ah, 32 years old puts him around the same age as Robert and as Bethany. This accident is a dreadful tragedy. This play will probably never see the light of day and I'll lose another chance to make a name for myself. It's not every day that you get to work with such well-known actors. It was so lucky. Oh, I was so lucky, and now it's slipping away from me. So we have three questions. Question about his actors, question about the accidents, question about the rehearsals. Rehearsals. Rehearsals, all right. Card 56. All right. We worked hard every day to get ready for the premiere. Every morning when I arrive around 9.45, the whole team is ready to go and we usually finish very late in the evening. It's starting to wear on us, but I won't let anyone slow down now. Admittedly, I arrived a little late this morning, but it's nothing compared to Mr. Duchamp. Who's Mr. Mr. Duchamp? Mr. Duchamp is the stage manager. No, hang on. Set designer, Paul Duchamp. We can't actually interview Paul Duchamp. That's interesting. Ooh, is he dead? Duchamp could be dead somewhere in the theater. He's late, he hasn't turned up. It's because he's dead. And he has the key. Yes, <laughs> he has the key. Oh, oh, okay. Um, so we, we can get his thoughts on some of the people here. So, Winsley, he hired me. I owe him everything. The balcony. He's dead in the balcony. Oh, he could be cunty. Okay, there you go. Uh, Priscell is a future star. More, an incredible talent despite his problems. So the director does actually like the drunk. It's okay. Uh, Singleton, the greatest actor of his generation. Thomas, not the best, but I can make do. Duchamp, a layabout who needs to be driven. Bethany, a conscientious girl. And Lyot is a reserved man. Now, the, this card has this watch 
icon. If we pick up three of these symbols, we are able to reveal a card. I'm just going to double check to make sure we haven't picked any up. I don't believe we have. Balcony, let's go. You want to just we have left? You want to just One, go two, straight three, to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, mm -hmm. thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We have like twenty-five cards down, right? Okay, so you you got you got a bit of room to be able to. Uh, yeah, to we're go going places. to the balcony. Go to the balcony. All right, balcony is card ten. To the balcony. Here it is. All right. Oh, oops. Uh, okay, from the balcony, you have a bird's eye view of the entire auditorium. In one corner, there is a small door with a lighting control booth sign on it. We have the option to go on in to the lighting control booth. Do we want to do that? Remember, we couldn't see above the stage, could we? Do you want to go into the lighting booth? Are you with us, Sarah? Yes. Can you oh. not hear me? No, couldn't hear you. No, so, oh. so you must have cut out for a second there. So do you yes, want I to... want to go in. Yes, yes. Okay. 41. Because that means we can jump straight back to the other location. And we're saying turn all the lights on. That makes sense, doesn't it? So there we go. We've got the lighting control booth. Oh, but we need a key. Oh, does this key fit that lock? It's not going to, is it? No, it does not. It, could. it does not. So, it, so we now have two locations that require keys. Two locations that require keys. And I think it's going to make sense. I'm going to put that over here and put those. These are like redundant locations. In fact, all of that is redundant, isn't it? Let's tidy this up. So we have Callum's office and we have the lighting control. Both of those are going to help us. Uh, just get some order going on here. And in fact, neither of those helps us any further. Okay, I think that is all good. We can see how many cards we've got. There we go. What room haven't we been in yet? Oh, we've been in the lounge, we've gone to the balcony. We haven't been in the scenery room. We haven't been into Troy's office. There you go. Scenery, Troy's office are the two rooms we haven't been in. And we're up to 28 cards, so we have two cards remaining. Oh, um... What is the bottom room so next we, to the stage, or...? We have, we have the scenery room up at the top, and we have Troy Winsley's office. Scenery. You want to go to the scenery at the top, so that's 43. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Scenery room. Does it require a key? Oh, it does. It does require a key. I'm going to Where keep... are all the keys? I w well, I keep on I keep on thinking this key might open multiple rooms. 
because that would make sense, but let's give it a go. Nope. Okay, who this is the guy kid? in charge of all of the sets and stuff? Well, here we go. So that probably is the stage manager, David Thomas. Yeah, so, so does he have an office or do we just have to talk to him? We just have to talk to him. Yeah, let's talk to him. So that's 47. This is our last card of the 30. 47. So we will take a pause and see if we can solve this case. Uh, here is Mr. Thomas. Okay, Mr. Thomas, 30 years old, stage manager, okay. I swear I had nothing to do with it. Paul checked the ropes last night, but he wasn't there at 9.30, as he promised to do the tests before rehearsals. I took care of it after they started, but I didn't do anything wrong. It was sabotage. An intruder must have gotten into the theatre. It's easy to get in. I have a master key that gives me access to every room in the theatre, but during the day, the doors are often left open. Oh, except for today. Except for today. Question him about the technical team. Question him about the incidents. And then if we get hold of two of these key cards, then we can draw a special card. We've collected right. one key. No, we collected a timepiece. Oh. Uh, it's, the, it's the symbols. We need to have two of these. So it basically, it's another card with that symbol on we need to collect. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. All right. So we've got him just there. Now, we do have to take that pause because that is now 30 cards. So let's go over and just remind ourselves the questions that we need to answer, okay? And maybe what we should do is if we type this into chat, then we can scroll back through chat to see what our answers were. Because remember, we can keep going, it just means we get less points. So here we go. Question one, why isn't it an accident? I mean, do we have options, or is it like a free-form answer? It, 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 it's a free-form answer. There is there is a description in the uh, solution, and if our answer is close to that description, we get the point. If it's not, if we're far out, we don't. Not an accident, because there's been too much stuff going on. Okay, so you just you don't believe in coincidences, then? Right. I think we possibly need more of an answer than that. I think we need to. We need oh. to. I think we probably need, and not because I've looked, but just given an idea of what these type of games are like. I think we probably need to sort of point something. So maybe what I might suggest is somebody is trying to cover up the fact of this is a plagiarized play. So maybe that would be a possible reason mm -hmm. why. But, but that doesn't mean it's correct. Chat, do you have any suggestions from what, everything you've uh, discovered tonight? Why isn't it an accident? What did you, uh, what did you link on? What did you ma makes you think it's not an accident? Because remember, the rope doesn't look like it was cut, just looks like it's frayed. It just like, looks like it's old. Everything's fine with the rigging. Maybe it is purely just a coincidence, and yet we know it's not. Yeah, I still say it's because there's too much stuff's been happening. The play supposedly been is a fraud. Um... All right, so we're gonna we're gonna say that that is our answer. We happy with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Who is the killer? Well, at first we thought it was Oliver. <laughs> you thought it was Oliver. No, it was a collective. Everyone did. Was it? Um, but oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Everyone agreed. 
Oh yeah, everyone agreed. They're all with you now. Okay, uh, are you staying with Oliver, or do you believe it might be somebody else? In a way, I want to, but no. Um. Hmm. Who do you think didn't do it? I don't think that the drunk guy did it because he wanted to. He wanted to be in the play. He wanted it to happen. Okay, so we, we're crossing him off. Okay, I don't think it's Cecilia, our friend. Yeah. Because she invited us in, and we definitely know that it was wasn't George Singleton because he's dead. <laughs> so we basically have. We have the lighting technician, the costume designer, the director, the stage manager, and the only other person. Let's, we, our first guess. Let's go with Oliver. We have, yeah, we haven't got. We've got Oliver, and we've got the production company Troy. Those are the two that we haven't go spoken to. You're going to go with Oliver. Not Oliver but we don't know right now, so we're going to go with Oliver. Okay. What is the motive? He was the original writer of the play. But but if but hang on, but so if Oliver was the writer of the play, surely he would want his play to be uh, to be shown, wouldn't he? What who whoever... the fact that it was his and not the other person? <gasps> Can the writer of the play be the one that, that is the murderer? Because they found out that it was... The main actor was like, Hey, you plagiarized this play. And then she was all like, Oh no! And then killed him. Well, I don't know. Is that what, is that what, you, is that what you're thinking? Okay. Yeah, who's the writer of this play? He, could, he couldn't remember, but he thought... Th this was the letter from Henry Palmer, No, not wasn't the it? original. Who is the current? Oh, the current the current writer of this play is Patricia Dalton. That's my guess then. It's Patricia. But we haven't met Patricia and we can't talk to Pat Patricia. Yeah, but we still can't say that it could be her? Um... Because here's the thing. The guy who ends up being dead happens to be the guy who got a letter saying that the play was um, a forgery or was a uh, copy. Okay. And then so he brought it up to her and she was like, no, it wasn't. Don't tell anybody. And then he was like, I'm going to have to tell somebody. And then, oh, no, the sun fell on him. Right. Oh, okay. All right. So you're saying then that the motive. Sorry. So that is, was that the. Look, that is the motive. The. Um... Yeah. Okay, right, all right, fair enough. What specific object does the murderer have on their person that would allow you to unmask him or her? He's going to have on her a key. A key that would have allowed her to... She's going to have the master key to the building. Okay. Yes. Because David hasn't, David, the stage manager, hasn't got, well, he said he has the key, but uh, we don't know whether he, he's lost it. No, well, he says he, he, he has a knife or a key on her. I'm, I'm wondering if the person who is the murderer actually has the original play on them. You might have that on her too, then. Yeah. Put that down. The original play. The original play. I'm just going by some of the things that we've we've heard of tonight, and so maybe that is. So, what did George Singleton and Oliver Callum argue about? His drinking. No wait, George Singleton is the guy who. Um, He's this guy who's dead. The dead guy. They argued because he was upset at the other guy's drinking and he was trying to tell him, no, he'll be fine. Because that's what the drunk guy told us is that he was standing up for him. 
Uh, let's just double check here. I'm sure Singleton tried to stop him. So it was it was Winsley, the production manager, no, not production, the um, the uh, the manager, or the owner of the production company. He was trying to fire uh, the Welsh actor. Uh, but on stage, Singleton tried to stop him, and that's why they argued yesterday. Oh, hang on a second. No, it was it, that Callum is a bastard. He's trying to kick me out. So yes, but Callum, Callum says of him that I'm just looking across. And he was okay. But he yeah, an incredible talent despite his problems. So I don't think Callum doesn't sound as if he has a has an issue with him, even though he thinks that Callum does. So, oh, but are we going to are we going to say that they were arguing over Everett Moore? I think that sounds good. Yeah. In addition, question: Who ransacked the bar and why? Uh the drunk guy because he's a drunk guy. <laughs> yes, I, I think uh, we've definitely found that one out, haven't we? Okay. Now, we've we've answered those questions. So, potentially, if we have any of those correct at this stage, that's five points. But we can keep on playing and get to the next level. So the next level is 45 cards. We've got another 15 cards to basically reveal. All right. At that point, then, we will get four points an answer. If we want to supersede any of our suggestions so far. All right. So... We'll keep going. We'll look, I'm looking at the time. We'll keep going and we'll call it just before the nine o'clock point. Whichever comes first. Fifteen cards or just before nine o'clock. Right. Where do you want to go next? Or whom do you want to talk um, to? Remember, David Thomas, you can... Stage manager's office? Stage... Uh... Yeah, we're trying to get his key. How do we get his key? Right. Well, you, you might have to talk to him a little bit more. Let me, uh, let me just quickly. Uh, I think you need to, well, it's up to you. You can still, you can still ask the director and the stage manager questions, or you can attempt to go into the production man. Uh, sorry, the production company's office that was at Troy Winsley's at 40, number fourteen. That's the one area that you haven't had access to. Which one did we not get access to? Um, Troy Winsley's office. He's the, yeah, he's the owner okay. of the production company. Do you want to give that a go? Yes. Yeah, all right. So, here we go. Here's the office. The door has been forced open. Gonna get them keys. The door has been forced <laughs> open and no longer closes properly. Apart from that, there is no evidence that this has recently been a burglary, that there has been a recently been a burglary in this room. All of the documents are stored on the desk, and there are no apparent signs of a disturbance. There is a keyboard next, right next to the office door. So we can examine, examine the keyboard. So that's a keyboard as in a board of keys, not a musical keyboard. <laughs> um, and then, or we can examine the documents. Um, we're going to do both. Let's do the desk first. Desk first. Now let's do the keys first in case after we get the key something happens. Okay, okay. 29. I'll just take that, put that there. And there we go. We have the key board. So we have the scenery office key and we have the office of Oliver Callum. So cards 12 and 31. Do we want to swipe them both up? Yeah. 
minutes, please. Okay. So 12. 31. What I will do is I will just place those. So 31 is with that one there. And 12 is with the scenery room just there. All right. Uh, there are some documents that we can take a look at. Do you want to take a look at those documents? Yes. So number eight. Here we go. So amidst the many documents, a letter catches your eye. Barclays Insurance. A list of King's Theatre Insurance premiums. Glass breakage and vandalism, not reimbursed. Theft, depending on expert evaluation of the stolen goods. Fire, £3,000. Accidental injury of an actor, £8,000. Sorry, the fire was £3,000. Accidental death of, a of an actor, £20,000. <laughs> Okay, so so hey, basically, now this guy seems like he's a failing guy and wants all of his money. Yeah, in other words, tr trashing the lounge bar gets you no money, but if an actor dies, woohoo, it's the jackpot. <laughs> right? And so, what would uh, what would this person have had on them? Uh, this letter. Ah, uh, well, th this is a this is a letter inside. Winsley's office, so it's not on him. Yeah, we haven't actually spoken to Winsley. How do we speak to Winsley? Uh, number thirteen. So we can talk to him, but he doesn't. He's not, he doesn't have that letter on him. Hmm. Let's use them keys. Can we hook them up to the places that they go? Yes. Okay. Where do you want to go? Uh, Oliver's well, office. Well, that one key. Which one needed it to be the center line? Because that's the one key on the right there. So the steel key goes into the scenery room. And the copper key. Yeah, I want to go in the scenery room. Okay. So uh, let's just make sure it's correct. I'm sure it is. There it is. So we get to draw card three. And we can go into me. So, opening the scenery room door. The key fits into the lock, but no matter how hard you try, you cannot unlock the scenery room door with it. Upon closer examination, you can see that it's not an exact match for the lock. So you may draw card 38 if you have collected two key symbols. We do have two key symbols now. So yeah. We can, so we can draw card 38, which is good. Let's do that. Okay, here we go. We may draw this if we do have two key symbols. We do. Does my master key open the scenery room? Of course, Miss Harper. Mr. Thomas smiles as he shakes his keys. He uses one of them to open the door and ushers you in. The scenery and the props are stored in this room. Behind a chair, you find an open toolbox and a rough wooden mallet in it. Upon closer examination, you notice a tiny shard of glass stuck into the mallet's head. Interesting. Hmm. Shard of glass. Well, oh, 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 oh. Somebody vandalized the lounge, didn't they? Did they mm -hmm. use this wooden mallet to vandalize the lounge? And hence, the shard of glass from the broken mirrors. Potentially. Okay. So that's the scenery room. Do you now want to go into Oliver's room? Absolutely. Okay. So we put these together. And it allows us to open up card 32. And here we 
go. Chalkboard with some sketches on. Okay. It's a windowless office filled with the smell of stale tobacco. There is a wooden table in the middle of this Spartan room with a massive ashtray on top. Behind it is a red velvet armchair. A blackboard is placed on an easel. A diagram is drawn on it in chalk. So we can examine the blackboard or we can examine the ashtray. Blackboard. Okay. And that is 34. <laughs> how, how, how to kill how to kill an actor <laughs> recently a diagram was drawn on the blackboard with white chalk so there is a swapping of actors positions the stroke of fate scene act two scene three so George and Everett swapped places. But mm. the swapping of the of the actors is done with a red chalk, isn't it? So hmm. So did he want the drunk guy to be the one that got hit? I think I think yeah, maybe initially. You know who's gonna who's gonna care about the drunk guy being dead, but I think obviously George knew something or suspected something and confronted somebody, and that being the case, the order has been swapped, hasn't it? Yeah, so maybe they're in it together. I don't know. Did you want to look at the ashtray? Yes, of course. Because it might show somebody else was in there with him. This is true. Well, who, who do we know that smokes? Well, we don't know that uh -huh. yet. There's a burnt sheet of paper. Due to the amount of ash, an entire sheet of paper must have been burnt in this ashtray. All that's left is a bit of an envelope and a small piece of paper on which you see the end of a word. Palmer. Palmer. Palmer, Palmer. Who's Palmer? But that was somebody at the very beginning. Palmer, Palmer, Palmer. Do we have a Palmer? Joseph, Who was the one that wrote the letter to the dead guy? Oh, 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 oh. <gasps> oh, oh, look at you. Yes. Oh. So, yes, it is the if it's the end of a letter... Then it is. It's Henry Palmer. You're quite right. So, so he had written. So he knew about it being a plagiarized thing. And he's written to the director as well as the actor. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, indeed. Okay. So we definitely. So is oh yes. So it it's all about the play, isn't it? It's about this director is putting on a play, knowing full well that it's actually plagiarized. Uh, he has been told, but also the deceased actor has been told as well. Mm. Rogue is saying we've got a lot of cards. Let's count up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. You're up to 40 cards. you got five more cards. And then we've got to... Uh, Answer the questions. Okay. 
Does anybody have any any other ideas about me going on that would direct us as to where we should be be looking? All I can point out to you that we haven't been able to get a key for the lighting control room. Did that? He basically said 38, didn't he? I think we've done 38. Yes, we have. Um, so we can't go into the lighting control. We can't go and see what's above stage to basically see about the rope. All right, so that's kind of important. That's an area there we can't do. We've got a few more questions that we can ask the director. We've got questions that we can ask the stage manager. We have spoken to everybody apart from Troy Winsley, the actual company director. So we need to talk to him then. He's potentially the only person we haven't spoken to, at least initially, yeah, so anyway. Yeah, talk to him. So he is number 13. There he is. Doesn't look happy. Okay. <clears throat> You must be the famous Claire Harper, who Miss Prussell has spoken so highly of. This accident is truly a tragedy, Miss Harper. Poor George Singleton. I'm sure he would have wanted the show to go on, but I don't think it's likely now. The King's Theatre doesn't have much money. I don't think I can find actors of Singleton's caliber who are willing to accept such a small fee. I'm going to have to call the police. I suppose you understand that. In the meantime, I can't stop you from shoring our theatre. So, we can question him about this morning, question him about the play, question him about the burglary. About the play. About the play. Okay, so that's card one of five. This is two of five. I had a unique opportunity to stage a play with George Singleton. With his reputation, we would have had a full house every night, and I could tell that there was a pile of money to be made. I didn't want to miss out on that chance, Miss Harper. <coughs> Losing my voice. <laughs> okay, so his thoughts on Singleton is a great loss for the theatre. Prussell is a rising star. Everett Moore, a talent that improves with time. So again, another person who liked the drunk. I think it's just the drunk who thinks everyone's out to get him. Uh, David Thomas, an efficient and organized man. Bethany O'Connor, a great professional. Robert Lyatt, my budget didn't allow me to hire him, but he accepted a smaller salary. Paul Duchamp, an ungrateful man who keeps asking for money who is and who is always late. By the way, I'm guessing he hasn't arrived yet, has he? I saw his key on the board this morning. So we need to have three... Haven't we been in? We need to have three watch symbols. We've now got we two. We have two. We've got two. But what room haven't we been in? We, can't, we haven't been into the lighting control booth because we can't get in. Because we don't have that key. And... So far, we haven't met anybody who can help us with that. And how many more do we have left now? Uh, three cards. Oh, uh, what else were you able to ask this guy about? Um, yes, it is down to these questions, isn't it? Because we've tr attempted all of the rooms. We can ask him about the play. We can ask him about the burglary. David Thomas. We can ask him about a technical team and about the incidents. And Oliver, we can ask him about the actors, the accident, and the rehearsals. Hmm. I don't 
don't know. This game is throwing me for loops. <laughs> the loops. It's throwing me for loops. It's, I'm like, yes, we're going this way. But now it's like, nope, you should go this way. You want me to give you a hint? Yeah. Yeah? You want to talk to David Thomas about the technical team. Okay, yeah. We can find out more about this lighting character. Because that's, well, yes, that's kind of the problem, isn't it? We want to get above the stage to be able to see there. So, Mr. Thomas. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. Thomas about. So, Mr. Winsley. Mr. Winsley being the uh, the guy we've just spoken to, opens the theatre around 8am. The keyboard is in his office and everybody goes there every morning. The technical team usually arrives separately before 9am. Only Paul has trouble being on time. Paul Duchamp, the lazy um, Frenchman. Once again this morning, he didn't arrive at 9.30 like he's promised. He's going to hear it from me when he gets here. He's going to have to explain why the ropes gave way. So he does have his comments on various people, but ultimately we have another time symbol. So we can now draw card 16. So that was three. 16 is four. And here we go. Paul Duchamp, the elusive Paul Duchamp. We got the three keys. Is he dead? Being late seems to be a way of life for Paul Duchamp, who strolls into the theatre as if nothing has happened. David told me about what just happened, and he said there was a detective here. I am all yours. So here's his thoughts on the various people. <laughs> so Troy Winsley, a crook, the gimp should pay us. <laughs> George Singleton, an actor making his comeback. Celia Purcell, Singleton pulled strings for her. Everett Moore, can get angry when he hasn't had a drink or when he hasn't had his drink. Oliver Callum, a dog who's all bark and seems to have been after Singleton these past few days. David Thomas, competent but exhausting. Bethany O'Connor, a complete professional. Robert Lyatt, a somewhat boring man who never complains, not even when he's not paid. So we can question him about the scenery, we can question him about the atmosphere during the rehearsals. What cards do we have left though? Uh, you got two cards left. Well then we're going to ask him about both. Well, do the scenery first. Yes. So that's 11. Oh yeah, because it might lead us to another card. Alright. I don't understand how it could have happened. Mr. Thomas told me that today we were going to try making the giant sun set. I checked all of the ropes last night and they were securely attached. There's no way they could have been damaged overnight. I had told Mr. Thomas to be there... I had told Mr. Thomas to be there at 9.30am to do the test before the actors arrive but I couldn't get out of bed. 9.30am is an appallingly early. I didn't choose this job so I could ha work regular hours. So Mr. Thomas took care of it. He must have, been, have tested moving the sun up and down several times in a row. I suppose the rope must have snapped after that. So I guess in some way, he's the one who killed Singleton. Okay, so that one could have been an accident though. But again, no. Do you know what? I, I think that's what it is, isn't it? Is that actually, it, what, it, it is an accident. Right? He, he's the person who was holding the rope, but ultimately, it has just frayed. It's just, it, but you know, I don't think Mitt Thomas has done it on purpose. He's just the person who was holding the rope. He was the one who's responsible. The bigger problem is about the actual play itself, isn't it? There's the... Mm -hmm. The uh, production manager who, or director who is simply trying to get some money. He, that's all he's after. Right. Um, somebody knows about the fact that the play's plagiarized, and so 
wanting to uh, get rid of George. But then, you see, that's the difference, isn't it? Is that this is it's kind of an accident from David Thomas's sort of perspective, but somebody else is trying to make it happen <laughs> because they don't want uh, the info to, uh, to come on out. Hmm. Ooh, difficult. So then does the director know that the um, rope was frayed and so he had them switch places because the other guy brought it to his attention that it was plagiarized? Maybe so. No, I mean, yeah, possibly so. But the other guy, I think, is in it because he wants all the money and he had that insurance form. And that's the thing. He would have been okay with the drunk guy being dead, but he didn't know that the director was going to switch their places. So he was all like, oh, well, if this rope is frayed from testing it so much, oh, no, if it falls and accidentally kills someone, and he thought that he was going to accidentally kill the drunk guy, but instead killed the good actor. So I still say it's that guy who had the insurance form. What was his name? He was the, the, the set manager, correct? Or like the production guy? Uh, yes, production guy is David Thomas, isn't it? Who we've just been speaking yeah, to. Yeah. And he's the one that said that Thomas is the one who was who was doing that. So yeah, I say he was like, he tested it and was like, hey, wait a minute, this rope is looking pretty uh, frayed. And so then he kept doing it so it would be frayed, and then when he thought that the drunk guy was going to be under it, it would fall. He didn't realize that the director had switched. But he was going to accidentally have the drunk guy killed. And then nobody would have really been as upset about it. I'm liking the so sound of that. Right. So that's my, that's where I'm at. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it now. So... And when it asked what was he found with, well, he was found with that letter on his desk. The insurance information. I'm just going to check. Right, that definitely doesn't work there. Aha! Right, here we go, that steel key that got us into the scenery room will also get us into the lighting control booth. Well, do we have enough cards left to go see it? Uh, I think so. So it says draw card five. Okay, so here we go. There's card five. We are in the booth. The key creaks in the lock and the door opens into a tiny staircase leading to a technical booth. The booth overlooks the theatre where large spotlights shine down on the stage. There is a stack of papers gathering dust on a small desk. So we can switch on the spotlight or we can examine the stack of papers. Well, check out the stack of papers. All right. That's 50. In the midst of technical notes you, that read like gibberish to a novice, one document in particular catches your eye. Lover's choice. Two suitors, one love, one impossible choice. A play right, like in three, that, three acts by Brett Taylor. What's the lighting guy's name? Uh, lighting guy is Robert Lyatt. Oh, wait, is Robert what? Lyatt, but the thing is, so that means Robert Lyatt is, if he's the lighting Lyatt? guy... Lyatt? Robert Lyatt is the letters of Brett Taylor. Even the dogs know. It is, isn't it? Yes. <gasps> oh, have you just cracked the case? Yes. Robert Lyatt is Brett Taylor. Oh. That's why he was okay with not getting paid. Because he was going to sue them. 
Yeah, he's doing all this because because he's getting his revenge. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Do we do we? So I think we're up to the the forty five cards. Maybe we got we got one card left, which was turn the spotlight on. Yeah, if we have one more card left, then turn the spotlight on. So that allows us the spotlight. The spotlight is going to shine directly on the um. Oh, I thought it's going to shine directly on where the rope was because it was never cut. It was frayed, which the spotlight would do. Okay, which draw card forty, and remove card fifty-one from the pile if it's not been drawn. So okay, so that's too late. So we get card forty. This is our final card. All right. So above the stage. The catwalk can be inspected more easily with a spotlight shining on it. Up on a high beam, there is a glint of light as if it were reflecting off a piece of glass. Climbing along the beam is not for everyone and it requires a bit of agility. There is a large piece of glass struck in the wood. It's extremely well hidden. You have difficulty removing it without hurting yourself. After climbing down, you notice that this odd piece of glass looks like a shard of broken mirror. Because it would reflect onto the rope, cutting the rope. It's the lighting guy. He told the um, actor that the plague would... He sent that letter saying, hey... Or he found out that he's told and the actor didn't care if it was a forgery. Okay, so... So, so, so. We're going to... I don't to... know, but that's that guy. He wrote it. It was the lighting guy. We are going to answer these questions again and see if our answers have changed. If they change, then we have slightly less points. Okay, so here we go. Ah, uh, yes, Roger. Also makes sense is that the glass was wedged so the rope would move up and down and fray it. Okay, okay, Roger. Good. So here we go. Why isn't it an accident? Because there was glass there. <laughs> exactly. Rogers, Rogers just answered, hasn't it? Yes. Glass was purposely placed in the beam, so it looks natural, but actually it's manufactured, isn't it? Okay, so that's going to be four points for that one. We we did, we did have a five-point answer, but I think we're confident with this four-point answer, aren't we, yeah? Who is the killer? Okay. Oh, it's a toss-up between Thomas and the lighting guy. But technically, if Thomas was the one controlling it, it would have been Thomas. Roger saying lighting guy. I, I got to admit, I'm, I'm with Roger on this. I think it's lighting guy, especially, yeah. especially considering... Because he you, wrote the... Yeah, he wrote the, the original. Yeah, okay. So that's another four points. We're potentially eight points here. What were, was the killer's motive? He wrote the play. Wrote the play. Okay, it's to do with the play, to do with it being plagiarized, etc., yeah? Uh, what specific object does the murderer have on their person that would allow you to unmask him or her? I mean, technically, it's in his locked office. So I would say the original. The original, yeah. Yeah, we're going to go with that. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, but Rogue is saying glass. I, I, I'm kind of assuming that the glass has been there for some time. Remember, somebody vandalized the lounge bar with that hammer, and then they've hammered some of that glass up on that beam, but that happened a couple of days ago. So he might not have glass on his person now. Oh, but on his person slash office, because he was in there, is the original play. Okay, but yeah, I think the original play possibly is the is the stronger element, isn't it? What did George Singleton and Oliver Callum argue about? About it being plagiarized. Because they both had the letter. Uh, they did, didn't they? Yes, so we're changing our minds and we're not going with talking about the Welsh actor. It's actually about the play, isn't it? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so ultimately... We, we've revised our answers, and we're essentially accepting four points an answer here. So... I'm thinking we score 20 points if we are correct with all of our answers. 
All right, let's find out. Yeah, I think we've done it. Oh, it says, do not open until investigation is complete. <gasps> Ooh, I think we've done it. it. They had us going for a moment in a loop, but then we figured it out. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just quickly skim over this because I'm not going to share it 100%. Um, but I'm just going to say whether we were right in our points. Let's just have a look. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, we've got one part correct. Oh, okay, but but what part? I'm just I'm just going I'm just going through. Hang on. Okay, we've got two parts correct. I mean, the arguing over the plagiarism, I think, is correct. The It's not an accident because of the glass and the wall is correct. It could technically be a toss-up between Thomas and the lighting guy. Hmm, okay. We've kind of got another part correct, but only half so. We didn't quite get it. They certainly, we did not use a certain series of words to actually say, yeah, we kind of got that half right. I would question that a little bit. I mean, what the guy would have maybe had on his person was the key to that room. <laughs> I'm literally reading that bit. Can you see over my shoulder? What's going on? No. I don't know why I said no so convincingly. <laughs> We're in two different countries. <laughs> uh, no. Right, so we got one aspect wrong. And we got another aspect right. He's okay with not getting paid because him and Thomas are in on because Thomas wants to get the insurance for everything going on. And he's okay without getting paid because it's going to be brought to light, haha ha, pun intended, that he was the original writer of the play. Okay. And we got another aspect right. So we have scored between 15 and 24 points. Out of how many? Uh, it's out of a potential, uh, out of a potential 30 points. Okay, so that's not bad. Right, so here we go. Robert Lyatt is arrested and the trial makes a big splash in the entertainment world. Another actor eventually replaces George Singleton and the play is a success. So that is the conclusion. I'm not good, like say, the way that the, the game Play, uh, describes everything is it's a really good read uh, but of course it completely then ruins our investigation we got some of it right we got some of it wrong even though everything in this particular story has been laid on out it's the interpretation um, that we as players how we have processed that and other players uh, or even viewers looking in on this may have processed some of this information slightly differently. So that's why I'm not going to reveal all of the answers as they are written in the uh, in this. But I'll give you an idea so you can't see. It's quite detailed in all the uh, elements it goes through. 
Uh, it tells you exactly where all the thinking is as far as each aspect. Uh, it, it's very clever, it's really nicely done. We, we, we should be proud of what we did. Um, we definitely got m s most aspects correct. There was just a couple that we were just slightly off on. We didn't quite use the right sort of... We, weren't, we, were, we were there, but wasn't quite on the right line of thought. So sometimes we might have had the answer, but our working, working out was not correct. <laughs> if you think of going back to school. I want you to show me the answer, but the answer's not good enough. I need to show... You need to show me your workings out as That's well. We just didn't. We just didn't show our work. Yes, exactly, and it's our work that let us down a little bit as detectives, even though potentially we got the, the right answer. We didn't jail the wrong person, so that's always good. That's always a plus. Yes, yes. So the uh, yeah, that that's, that was an interesting case. I I, I enjoyed that. What did you think? Because this is the first time you've played this game. I liked it. The cards are really pretty and the art's well done as well. It is nice, isn't it? Yeah. They are working on a prequel uh, to this game. So the main character, uh, as you may have, uh, be aware, is Claire Harper. And so they are doing a prequel game where it's Claire Harper, as she learns to become a detective, um, partly set during her sort of schooling years. So that's going to be interesting. I, I don't. I think it might be out early part of uh, no, maybe late this year, early next year, because uh, this was. I think it was the tail end of last year when this one came out. So, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I, again, I, I love the artwork. The artwork's uh, absolutely beautiful, um, and it does kind of make sense. And it, and it's fun that this is a type of game where. You don't necessarily need any technology to support your play, so you you can play it if you were out on on holiday, and um, and it was raining, and it'd be a perfect game to unpack and uh, and entertain yourself with. Um, it reminded me of a game where we use the app to try to fill in our answers, and then we'd get like four out of five. Except this would be the one that you would play whenever your Wi-Fi is down. Exactly. Yes. Exactly that. Exactly that. Yes. Excellent. Well. There we go. Uh, I, well, I'm glad that you enjoyed it, and I hope, chat, uh, you enjoyed the mystery as it uh, unfurled itself uh, for us. Uh, I can't believe yeah. chat thought it was Oliver half the time. Ugh, what just silly gooses. Absolutely. Ch chat just leading us totally <laughs> in the wrong direction. I mean, what are they like, eh? <laughs> what are you like, chat? What, what are, are you, you like? like? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, Sarah, have a wonderful weekend and uh, look forward to uh, playing another game with you next week. All right, thank you for having me, Monkey. Bye, everyone. Okay, and so our thanks to Sarah for joining me tonight for playing a game of Suspects. Chapter 2, The Final Act. That was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed the game. Uh, we nearly got it right. We nearly got it right. Uh, close. Uh, looking forward to maybe playing this game again in uh, another few months. Uh, if you wanted to see our original... Uh, play of the game then uh, there is the act one is uh is available on youtube to watch uh look forward to seeing you all again on another games night next week but until then bye for now <laughs>